welcome to You Beautiful Creation. I'm Tina Jackson, and with me today I have a special guest. Her name is Sunita. Sunita, how are you? I'm well, thank you, Tina, for inviting <laughs> me, and hello to everyone there. Yes, yes, I met Sunita at Karis Bible College in Ann Arbor, and we happened to uh, go on to a missions trip in the UK, and it was the first time I ever really got to meet her because she was in the hybrid program, and I was in the weekday program. And then when we uh, joined together, it was just such a fascinating time to, to connect with her and then the people in Chicago, Karis, Chicago. And then we went overseas. So I got a chance to really meet this fantastic, wonderful person that has an awesome ministry that I had to just bring to you because she has just got teachings, a gift of teaching like no one I've ever known. And she is props usually, and she just gets you thinking. And I just love it, love it, love it. Now, she has a long last name, so I am definitely <laughs> going to leave that to you, Sunita, and uh, tell them your last name. And tell us a little bit about what it is that, uh, you know, how it is that you came to Christ. What, what put you passionately on fire for the Lord? What happened in your life that was that pivotal life moment? That's a loaded question, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> you don't want to be staying up here all night or morning. Um, thank you, Tina, again, for the opportunity. And my last name is Vijay Swarupu. Vijay Swarupu with two Zs in it. <laughs> um, my testimony, it's, it's kind of hard to put um, the Lord and experiencing Him in a few sentences, but I'll try to do that. Uh, April 14, 2017 is when I encountered the Lord when I was at a very low place in my life. You know, it, it felt easier to just to just die, uh, then struggling to live. And maybe, like, you know, it resonates with some of you out there. Uh, I was at that place where anything would be fine than living and just surviving. And that was the time when I turned to the Lord and um, asked Him to help me. And it was a simple call for help. You know, Jesus, I know you have, you can do this, so help me. And of course, I had the help of a lot of good teaching. Uh, from the word that I heard that that showed me that I can even ask for help. So uh, that's when I encountered the Lord April 14, 2017 and um, he made a deal with me and he said um, like you know you're ready to let go of your life so give me your life and you take my life. And I had to say yes to that. I mm -hmm. wanted to say yes to that and that's when everything changed in my life. You know, we like to use the word process. You know, process seems like a very long word, like you are slowly making a change throughout your lifetime. But for me, it was a progress, an instantaneous reaction in my heart. And I knew that I knew that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was one with the Lord. You know, I experienced His love in such a tremendous way that I haven't been. A, I haven't grown out of it. I have no intention of growing out of it. Mm -hmm. And everything I do is as a result of that. It's no longer I that live, but that Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. And I had to remind myself every day that I was dead that day, and something new was born in me. And I have to live according to that. And I delight mm -hmm. to live according to that. It's an mm -hmm. exciting journey. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. kind of my that's testament awesome. in a nutshell. Awesome. Did you have, a, uh, just out of curiosity, did you have any addictions that got broken that? Uh, that maybe some of the viewers that are struggling with some things that they have actually hope to say, oh, I can be free of that. So was there any addictions or anything? Thank you for reminding that. That's an important point. Yes, I was trying to cope with life challenges. And what do you do when you are going through these things? You look for substitutes, right? And I went for alcohol. Mm. Uh, I was a functional addict. I, I was able to function you know, during the day, but in the nights, um, I needed something to put myself to sleep and I realized that it was taking control of my life. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was wrong to do and I knew I didn't want to do it, but I couldn't help myself mm -hmm. um, because I, I was obviously yeah. addicted to it. So um, the Lord changed that. He, you know, the day I encountered Him, I met with Him, um, I wanted to finish up the remaining alcohol in the bottle. Obviously, it's expensive. So I thought, <laughs> you know what, from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to be a better person. Uh, but I just couldn't do it. I, I oh, tried wow. to consume Thanks that last bit of alcohol and it came right out of me. Wow! I went back and spit it all out. It just came out of me. And it wasn't the Lord telling me, instructing me anything. I just felt that I'm putting something vile into a body mm. that is now becoming a temple of the Holy God. And I didn't have all the scripture to know that. It was not me trying to live holy. It was just me reacting to my new self. 
And awesome. my new self is holy and consecrated. Awesome. And, and alcohol didn't fit in with that picture. You know, it sounds to me like you have a strong anointing to have certain things just broken off instantaneously. So, I mean, a lot of people sometimes have that, that slowly gradual thing that, you know, where they gradually go away, but you sounded like you had an instant radical transformation. So I wanted to just ask you, you know, with that anointing on you, can you pray for the people, just a really quick prayer of people that may be having an addiction that they will have that sudden bam breaking away? Can you just lead them yes, in a quick prayer? absolutely. If you're struggling with that, just mm -hmm. agree with me because yes. I know in your heart you want to let go of that. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your holy presence in our lives. Father, you have called us to be holy, mm -hmm. to be blameless, to live in your character and nature. So if there are any chains that are tied to us mm -hmm. that don't reflect you, mm -hmm. I speak against those changes. Yes. I speak against those bonds that are pulling us away from you, from the relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And I command those chains to break now yes. in Jesus' name, right now. Amen. Yes, right be now. It, be it alcohol, be it substance abuse, you name it, you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. It could be anything that's pulling away from you, Lord, and we mm -hmm. break those chains right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, may that fresh anointing and the Holy Spirit come and hit you as you just take a deep breath in, as you... Breathe in the presence of the Lord, and as you exhale, you are just releasing all that little bit of residue that's left in you, and that your walk is going to be different with the Lord, that you are going to see things suddenly in the scriptures as you open it, because you may not even know the scriptures right now, and it's just going to start to come alive and feed your spirit, soul, and body, and just get you radically on fire like it has Sunita, and she <laughs> hasn't stopped, and neither have I. <laughs> So praise be to God. So Sunita, she has such a wonderful ministry and she has a lot of things going on, but I thought, well, maybe I could just give her to just do a little bit of teaching of how she does stuff because it is so unique. And I just want to let that gifting of teaching shine. So is, <laughs> Sunita, is there like something that the Lord has put on your heart that you can share with the, the audience? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Um, I'm not going to go into a very in-depth teaching, but I want to leave you with some thoughts. Uh, that, are, that I personally feel very passionate about and that I think every Christian should know and walk in. And I want to begin with a picture, and I'm sure, you know, Tina will probably have it up on the screen. I want you to take a look at this picture. Mm -hmm. Tina, what do you see? I see a monkey in a suit. <laughs> right. And I think without God, this is what we are trying to be, a monkey in a suit. You know, inside of us, when we are born into this world, we are born with an evil nature. The word tells us, and we are trying, without God, we are trying to make ourselves look good, be good, you know, come up with all, all the paraphernalia of being a good person out in the society. But the, but the problem is, there is a monkey inside the suit, and God cannot fellowship with a monkey. I'm, I'm not saying in a literal sense, but you get my point there, right? Mm -hmm. um, God cannot fellowship with something that's evil inherent inside. It doesn't matter how good you are on the outside and he wants to change that he wants to change that nature and he did that by giving us his son and we understand all these things from the principle of being born again from salvation and and we understand this absolutely in our hearts that this is god's will that we be born, living as born again believers to have right relationship and fellowship with him now if you were to meet somebody who is stuck you know, in their sin and struggling with some addiction. And they will say something to you and say, like, you know, God cannot forgive me. You know, he's not going to receive me because I'm so deep in my mess. You will come alongside that person and you will say, no, God is going to forgive you. Mm -hmm. You know, reach out to him and he will forgive you. You will have, you have, why do you say that? Because you have this absolute assurance in your heart that forgiveness is something Jesus has paid for. Right, He has paid for our sins, so forgiveness is available in our salvation, and we do that with such a conviction. Nobody is able to uh, convince you that any of their sins is greater than the salvation. You know, why is that? Because we learn that from the Word, and one of the famous, one of the popular, or I would say very powerful scriptures uh, that talk about salvation is Isaiah 53. Where in the same Isaiah 53, there is another powerful truth that we have perhaps as Christians overlooked. 
So mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of highlight on that so mm -hmm. that you can be absolutely sure that healing is part of salvation. Now that's the place where sometimes we, we go into the buts. I know God wants to heal me, but I know, you know, God has, his, it's God's will that I get well, but he hasn't done it or haven't experienced it. That but truly reflects what we think in our hearts. So just as the same way we are confident about our salvation, our eternal salvation, if we can be confident about healing mm -hmm. in salvation, then we will be able to minister to somebody with the same confidence. And I wanted to walk you through mm -hmm. a couple of scriptures yes, today, please. Tina. Let's look, let's look at Isaiah 53, and I'm sure you are familiar with these scriptures. Look at me, look at these with me again, because this proves, that's the beauty of this. The, these scriptures prove that what God is saying is true. This is not just a doctrine out there. It's not some denominations practicing it or a cult, you name it. This is the truth, and when you begin to accept it as truth, uh, you have a reason for your faith. So let's look at Isaiah 53, and I'm going to pick up from verse 3. He is despised. Now this is talking about the anointed one, the Savior. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely, surely, absolutely, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Did Jesus bear our sins? Absolutely. What else is this talking about? That he bore our griefs and sorrows. And if you look up the word, the Hebrew word behind these, these words that are translated into English as grief and sorrows, mm -hmm. you will see that it's not talking just about <clears throat> you know, a spiritual healing or a mental healing. It's spirit, soul, and body. You know, God did that by fixing our spirit, by making us regenerate. You know, he has healed our spirit. By healing our spirit, he has made healing available to our souls and also to our bodies. So the word sorrows here actually includes every sickness, every disease out there mm -hmm. that he has carried. So if Jesus has carried, why should I carry that, mm -hmm. right? Why do we live in sin if God has forgiven us? From, from those sins. So the same concept applies here. Um, let's continue a little bit further. Verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. We understand that. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we, were, we are healed. And Peter, later, um, in his letter, he writes, he, he quotes the same scripture, and he says, by his stripes we were healed. He is confirming something that Christ has done. And over here, Isaiah is prophesying something that the Lord is about to do. It hasn't happened in his timeline, but we now live at a time when this has already been accomplished. If this is true, which it is, Christ did die on the cross for our sins. He did carry our sicknesses and diseases and by his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. So healing is part of salvation. It's not something exclusive out there, mm -hmm. right? If we can be absolutely sure about this mm -hmm. and have no doubt, uh, you, know, you can renew your mind to your truth and think and live like a new covenant believer. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you one more piece here and then I'll wrap up. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter eight. Right? The Gospels talk about the activity of Jesus, everything that um, Jesus had done during his ministry on the earth. And there are lots of healings involved in his ministry, miracles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And most of them were healings. Yes. And what we will consistently see in the Word is that, you know, it talks about him going about healing all who were sick. All. He healed them all. Yes. He healed them all constantly, it's all. Oh, Jesus never made an exclusion. He never said, I want to heal you, but live it out for a few more months, or you come back to me again later. He mm -hmm. never said that. So I want you to look at what Matthew wrote, right? Mm -hmm. He took the same scriptures from Isaiah. If in case you are still not convinced that healing is included as part of Isaiah 53.5, now let's take a look at what God has to say through Matthew, mm -hmm. right? And this is God giving commentary on his own scripture. So this is beautiful. Look at me with, um, at Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. 
When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, mm -hmm. that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Look at this verse. This is Matthew quoting Isaiah. Now, this is written in Greek. It's more specific here to say he bore our sickness. Just in case you're thinking this is all about depression and anxieties and spiritual healing. And this verse changes all of that. It clearly shows that you know, the healing that Christ paid for on the cross included physical healing. Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what Matthew is trying to say. In all of these things, Jesus is proving that he is the one who has taken up all our infirmities and and bore our sickness. So therefore, if he has on our behalf yes. taken that up, then why should I be walking in sickness or any in health that might be that might be bothering us? Yes, there is a mind renewal that needs to happen when we understand this truth. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to appropriate this truth. And a lot of times we think if it is said in the Bible, it's just going to automatically happen. You did not automatically receive forgiveness of your sins. Yeah, right? We care. entered into His grace through our faith. We ought to believe, and that's why Jesus keeps telling His disciples, fear not, just believe. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, this will, these a couple of scriptures are going to impress upon you today to, to meditate, think yeah. about it, and by faith, be willing. You know, when our heart is willing yes. is, is the first step towards that. Absolutely. That this is my right, this is my that's new right. covenant right to walk in, in, in the healing that Christ has purchased. Well, so. you definitely have stirred up the, the spirit because I could feel the anointing. My legs started to shake because I could feel the anointing coming. And uh, the anointing is here right now. So those of you that are having sicknesses and infirmities, uh, Sonita, you have such an anointing power. I mean, I could just love hearing her voice, just her voice talk. There's just such a soothingness. I just encourage you, go ahead and pray for our viewers about their healing that they need. Uh, go I would ahead. love to. I would love to agree with me that whatever mm -hmm. you have right now, yes. right, nothing is bigger than God and nothing is too small. Mm -mm. All right? So let's just pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Yes. This is our inheritance. This is something that you want us to walk in. Mm -hmm. Healing and walking in divine health gives you glory and honor. So, Father, we want to honor you with our body, soul, and our spirit. Yes. Father, we thank you that you did this all by regenerating our spirit, yes. by giving us healing in our spirit. Mm -hmm. So we renew our mind and we, and we release, release mm -hmm. your life, yes. Yes, there. your word, right your there. spirit for yes. healing right now. Yeah, right now. For right I now. Into agreement. Yes. And if you have a situation right now Shoot, concerning your scary. blood, be it diabetes, yes. I speak to you diabetes right now, you have to set yes. out of yes. this body. Yes. Body, you have to line up with the design yes. Yes. the way in which you were created, yes. holy and consecrated for mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you are having any diseases, any issues mm -hmm. <clears throat> with your muscles, yes. with your nerves, yes. any organs, mm -hmm. be, yes. be it um, long coughs for a long period of time, mm -hmm. lung diseases, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tumors or cancers, Whatever that has a name, mm -hmm. its name is below the name of Jesus. Lord, right. we give you victory mm -hmm. over these bodies right now. Yes. In and Jesus they are name. healed in Jesus' right mighty name right, right now, now as right we now. speak. And just Amen. receive that. Say, Amen. I receive, <coughs> I receive in Jesus' name. Receive that. So, I mean, that is just a small little bit of the teachings that she does, and she does usually a lot of stuff even with props, but she um, it just really, I just, I'm a visual person, so I <laughs> love it when she's like in person teaching like at churches and stuff, like when we did our ministry, she would have all these props, and I was just like, wow, that is some major like light bulbs going on in my, my <laughs> mind. But you have a bunch of stuff that is on your YouTube channel where it looks like you have a bunch of different uh, categories going on. And even in um, your, your monthly activities, you, you, it looks like you're like discipling to adults and to youth and doing uh, co-ed classes. And, and you also uh, have people from India, right, that That's are right. partaking in your classes. 
And I'm telling you, her classes are are so intense in the sense that they're interactive. Like you don't just when you attend, you got to be ready to not just sit there and listen. You will be called upon to read and to get some insight because she is such a great teacher, and she wants everyone to get it. So uh, can you tell us, Anita, about some of the, the programs that you have offered through your ministry and tell them about your ministry name, uh, you know, Galatians 2.20, and, and, or what, how did you get that name? And, and maybe just a little quick summary. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> like I shared in my testimony earlier, right? It's no longer my life, but Christ who lives in me. So mm -hmm. it made absolute sense when the Lord laid on my heart that I should I should teach the word. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. give me a ministry or a name or anything. I just knew, absolutely knew that he was sending me, you know, in fact, his words were, I'll send you to strangers. Yes. You know, take his truth to the strangers. There are many out there, you know, who, who either don't know the Lord or have the struggles that I did or don't know about healing, don't know that that is something that we have the right in Lord Jesus Christ. So my, my aim, my goal, my vision, I should say, is to take the truth as far as I can and as deep as mm -hmm. I can. Um, I call this like training, training the 99 mm -hmm. um, and going after the lost. So mm -hmm. uh, there are teachings that I um, organize uh, that happen throughout the week. There, It's for adults and also for youth. Let me just quickly um, yes. share with you a few. Um, I have um, what we do. We actually are a team. Um, it's not just me. The Lord has laid um, uh, on the hearts of some others who have come alongside and rallied and, and volunteered to help. So that's, that's amazing awesome. to see um, you know, how God wants to take this forward. And what we do is uh, we do have adult studies on alternate Saturdays that talk about the kingdom, the king, the kingdom, and the kingdom living to understand mm -hmm. our king, his principles, and how us living in the kingdom principles glorify the king. So looking at the word, um, from the context of kingdom because Jesus said, Jesus, the teaching of Jesus was always about the kingdom of God is here, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and this teaching kind of goes into that. And as Tina said, it's interactive. There is a lot of learning, obviously, um, but there, is, there are assignments and you know, there are questions that we come back and we discuss. So that's alternate Saturday. Mm -hmm. And every um, Thursday evenings, central time, <clears throat> um, 7.30, is um, uh, another study that I call trials and tribulations and walking in victory during that. You know, uh, God is good. We say God is good, but truly do we believe that God is good? And if God is good, how do we address, you know, how do we, how do we reconcile that with the fact that I am dealing with situations mm -hmm. and how do I overcome that? You know, God did not ask us to endure our life. He said, overcome it. Mm -hmm. um, and this teaching goes into a lot about discovering, um, you know, what, we got, what the Lord has given to us in terms of healing and walking in authority and all those wonderful things so that you can, by faith, walk in what you're called to be. Um, another teaching that um, is not presently available that I really love to do is identity. Mm -hmm. We call it the bond identity. Um, discovering who you are is yes, the first step. It's huge. It's the first step, <laughs> exactly. So um, there are a couple of um, adult teachings <clears throat> around these subjects. And um, do you want me to talk about um, the youth programs, Tina? Well, absolutely. And, you know, I, I would encourage you, you know, I'm sure throughout the year her, her studies are going to change and you have a, like a website yeah. that they can go to probably and you'll have things listed and I believe there's even like a blogs where someone is writing blogs and and she, she has a bunch of resources and teachings and there are these YouTube channel that she has that uh, has some samples of the, the classes that she she does so I'd encourage you to check them out but definitely tell us about the youth because the youth are sometimes just get looked over and pushed over and and I know I clicked on one of the things where they were taking a quiz and I thought it was so cute because there's all these kids participating and there's a lot so what is the age range that you're actually having these youth at usually yeah um, we have reached out to the youth because they are the next generation yes. and um, how do we present the word in a way that you know they are able to get excited about? And uh, one way we, we decided to do that is by way of a quiz, encouraging them um, by you know offering prizes and um, and and we started this three years ago, I believe, mm -hmm. three years ago, 
Uh, we started this annual quiz and it's offered, it was initially offered just here in the state of Michigan, but then as there was more interest from people from other states, and now last year we opened up the quiz to, um, to youth who are from India. Mm -hmm. um, so there, were, there was a overwhelming response. We had about 50 Praise kids God. registered for that, and That's I awesome. think um, close to 40 did participate. It's all done mm -hmm. through Zoom and online. We are still figuring out the ropes on how to do this, but it's exciting to yes. see them study the word, get ready, get prepared. Yes. Um, and, and participate in this online quiz, Absolutely. Uh, a way in which, you know, they are, they are putting the word in. Yes, you know? yes. So. And I'd encourage you, um, if you are financially able to donate, and especially because first she heard to buy prizes and to support this ministry, you have a website, Sunita. What is your website that they can donate to your ministry to help, you know, encourage it and bring it up, especially with the prizes for the kids uh, to, I mean, 50 kids or 40 kids, that's a lot of kids <laughs> to, you know, you know, have raffles and prizes, because I think it was a thousand dollar prizes, wasn't it, or something, or a thousand dollars worth of cash prizes, or what, if you can donate more, that increases up, right? That's the whole so, idea, amen. Tina. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the quiz is completely sponsored. Um, by parents and, and people like yourself. I mean, even if your child is not participating in the quiz, if the Lord lays on your heart, yes. and God has done that, and depending on what we receive, we give back yes. um, to this quiz. So That's every good. year it has increased. Um, so uh, thank you for pointing that out. We truly could use resources if the Lord has put mm -hmm. that on your heart. Our website is www.galatians220ministries, g220ministries.org. O -R -G. And we put out a lot of information, a lot of um, information in the social media when it comes close to Easter time. That's kind of our time when we do the quiz. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of logistics involved, a lot of communication, um, uh, and there are people who volunteer to help out with this. It is exciting, and um, we are hoping mm -hmm. that 2023 we'll, we'll have uh, more kids participate and um, it will be good. Awesome, so just really quick, because I know we're running out of time, when should the kids register so that they can partake in that Bible quiz? Like when, do you have like an open registration oh, yeah. <clears throat> date? Or I mean, or I know you should check the website because this, this video is gonna air more than just right now. It's gonna air in the future, so go check her website for the other dates. But for this this time, what is the, the times of registrations? Do you have usually, it? Usually the registration opens around February, February. 15th. Okay. Uh, we send out notifications and it's for the ages um, between 10 and 21. Okay. You know, the cutoff is 21. This is you. Great. So sure. I'm sorry for those who are about 21. <laughs> but we are awesome. thinking, Tina, that you know we should perhaps do a um, quiz for adults in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but awesome. this is where we have begun. Praise God. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to check out her websites and be sure to go to the YouTube channel as well. I'll have the links listed below and in the description. And I just want to thank you, Sonita, so much. You're such a blessing and I love you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Tina, and thank you very much, everyone, for watching the show. Um, I hope to meet you all in the future. Amen, amen. And just don't forget that you are a beautiful creation in Christ Jesus. Thanks for joining us.